All right, so welcome to This Week in Michigan Football History. My name is Chase Glasser alongside Ross Kaufman. Ross, great to be here with you. Great to be here with you too, Chase. So what we do is every week we just want to take a step back and look at what happened this week in Michigan football history. So, Ross? Thank you, Chase. So, it was back on Saturday, October 4th, 1997. The Michigan Wolverines traveled on the road to Bloomington, Indiana, where they shut out the Indiana Hoosiers in a 37-0 route. After a slow first quarter tallying only three points, Michigan racked up four touchdowns in the second quarter. Quarterback Brian Greasy threw for 204 yards and one touchdown before giving way to Tom Brady for the, last, for the vast majority of the second half as the team held a large, comfortable lead by then. This would, only, this would be the Wolverines' only shutout of the 1997 season as they would go undefeated, win the Rose Bowl, and be declared national champs. This was also the first time that the so-called Shem Beckler stripes were put on the sleeves of Michigan's road jerseys. These remained until the switch to Adidas in 2008. Ew. Right, so I think it's kind of unbelievable that with how lauded that 1997 team's defense was that they only had one shutout. I feel like they should have had more than that, but obviously you can't argue with the results. Big Ten champs, national championship. If it wins you a national champion championship, you can't complain about the how many shutouts you have. Yeah. That's not how the game goes. And, and talking about uniforms, I mean, Indiana had some hideous uniforms back then, as you can see in the clip. So, for another piece of more recent history, I want to go back exactly 364 days to the Maryland game of last year. So, Ben Mason introduced himself to the world, hurdling a Maryland defender in the second quarter en route to a 21-point win. Um, I mean, for a fullback, that's pretty impressive, especially as the fullback position is kind of dying out in college football. Yeah, he, he, he's always had hops, Ben Mason. Um, shocked the stadium. I was there to see it firsthand, and I was like, Whoa! Yeah, oh, it was, it was fantastic. And, I mean, uh, I mean 110,000 other people were saying, whoa, at the same time, but right. it, was, it was an incredible play. Absolutely, and I, it was just a dump off to the flat, so I, I, I was pretty impressed with that. So, you want to take us back a yeah. little bit farther? Meanwhile, this Saturday, Michigan will celebrate the 118th anniversary of the program's 100th win by hopefully getting win number 856 on October 5th, 1901. Michigan beat what is now known as Case Western 57-0 in fielding Yost's second game as the Wolverines head coach. So, Chase, going back to 1900, what happened? Well, I mean, you had Fielding Yost, who is one of the most revered figures in Michigan football history, and certainly in college football as a whole. He was instrumental in bringing the game of football to the Midwest, and obviously he got off to a pretty good start winning Michigan's 99th and 100th games in his first two games as head coach. So now, coming into this week, I think that this is, this is a very important game for Michigan. They're playing Iowa. Uh, if you go back to 1900, uh, Michigan 6-1 and one while playing Iowa within the week of October 1st through 6th. So the most recent matchup, one we would rather forget, 30-27 loss in 2003. But overall, uh, you know, Michigan has won 40 out of the 65 games against the Iowa Hawkeyes. But in the recent history, it hasn't been quite as good. Uh, they've lost five out of their last six. Most recently, they were upset. They were number three in the country, undefeated. They go into Kinnick on a frozen November night and lose 14-13. to So... Uh, for me, I'm hoping that Michigan plays a little more comfortably in the confines of Michigan Stadium. Uh, the last time they beat Iowa was in 2012 at Michigan Stadium. So what are you, what are you looking for in, in this week's game? You know what? There's something about Michigan football where they drag you back in. Just when you think the season's over and I can finally start doing my homework. <laughs> there's this gravitational pull that pulls me back into the game. It's like, ugh, ugh. And that's what Michigan football does. You know what? If Rutgers is the, per is the true perfect remedy for Michigan to get back on track, then prove it. This weekend, when they face the number 14 ranked Iowa Hawkeyes, Michigan has to prove that they're capable of putting up a big fight against the big guys. Because you know what? If they get crushed like they did last time against the Wisconsin Badgers, it's officially over. I can finally start doing my homework and going to class now. I hear you. I hear you. Well, big game, uh, big opponent, noon, Saturday. Let's hope we get a win. Let's hope. All right, you guys have a great sports night.